transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the great Broadway musical success, The Student Prince, starring Gordon McRae and Evelyn Case. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another big musical hit is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, tonight, Evelyn Case and I are bound for old Heidelberg, where we'll sing all those great Sigmund Romberg melodies from The Student Prince. These were the days when castles were hung with banners and echoed with the pomp and majesty of kings. These were the days when a crown prince might expect to wear a crown. His Royal and Serene Highness, Crown Prince Karl Franz of Karlsberg. Your Highness, Dr. Engel. What brings you to this dreary palace? I was summoned by your grandfather, the king, to discuss plans for your university education. And I have persuaded him, my boy, that you must go to Heidelberg. Heidelberg? Oh, doctor, I've never forgotten the stories you used to tell me when you were my schoolmaster. About Heidelberg. About the River Necker. And the student corps. And, and how they sang in the evening. Oh, and how they sang... And now, Karl Franz, they're going to let you escape from your gloomy castle for a year at least, to be free, to be a student like other lads. Oh, enjoy these days, Karl Franz, for they are golden days. Down where the Necker flows swiftly along Nestles a town that is famous in song Laughing lads roam through its streets so quaint. No one's a sinner, much less a saint. Twilight comes in and moonlight shines down, painting with silver or Heidelberg town. Hark how the echoes are ringing. Circle their glasses all night long. Golden days in the sunshine of our happy youth. Golden days full of innocence and full of truth. In our hearts we remember them all else above. Golden days, days of youth and love. How we laugh when the gaiety the mantle sting. Looking back.
Dr. Engel, my old friend, you must come to Heidelberg with me. Oh, I should be honored, Your Highness. Good. When can we be off? Oh, the sooner the better. Come on, boys. Have we had enough of classes for the day? Yeah! yeah. Are we dry as a desert in July? Yeah. What do we need? Yeah. Then we're off to the finest day in the world, Heidelberg. To the end, we're marching for a toast. Start parking under fruit trees, starting in the month of May. For there's no good fellow when you're feeling mellow through the tears, so yellow with the day. All in step, we're swinging while we're joining, singing with our voices, swinging in a merry rhyme. There is joy on bonding in a song, we sounding while we're trying, on bonding all the time. Are you a new student at Heidelberg? Why, yes. Yes, I am. I just arrived. Hey, will you join us for some beer? Uh, I'd prefer wine, I think. Wine? What's that? <laughs> beer is the official drink of our corps. Kathy, a beautiful Kathy, bring us some beer. Mind your manners, boys, or I won't serve you a drop. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this girl? This Kathy. Why, she works here at the inn. And she's the mascot of our corps. She's beautiful. Kathy, come, meet the new admirer. Hello. You've just arrived in Heidelberg? Yes. And I expect to study very hard. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Tell him, Kathy. Tell this freshman the way we study in Heidelberg. <laughs> Your Highness. Oh, we had no idea. We... Oh, forgive you for welcoming me as a friend. Oh, please, while I'm with you in Heidelberg, let me be one of you. Never, Your Highness, only Karl Franz. Please. Uh, toast, then, to our new friend, Karl Franz. And I should like to drink Kathy's health. <laughs> Highness, come. Yes, Dr. Engel. Hurry, hurry. We must move into our lodgings. Kathy, will you please show us to our room? I beg your pardon, Carl Franz, but it's getting dark. I thought I'd bring you a lamp. Well, that's kind of you, Kathy. What's that music? It's the students singing the serenade. Why, it's beautiful. Have you 
you any more princes at home? Any more what? Any brothers or sisters? No. A father and a mother, though. They're dead. The King of Carlsberg? He isn't your father. My grandfather. I haven't any family either. Oh, poor little Kathy. I only hope the Princess Margaret is one half as sweet and beautiful as you are. The Princess Margaret? Someday she'll be my wife. Don't you know what she looks like? No, I've, I've never met her. You're engaged? And you've never met? That's the way it is with royalty, Kathy. These things are arranged even before you're born. I'm engaged to a livery stable keeper in Vienna. Oh? Do you love him? I don't know. Oh. Oh, Kathy. Kathy, darling. No, you must. I'd better go now. Good night, Carl Franz. Kathy! Oh, oh, come in, Dr. Engel. Forgive me for intruding, Carl Franz. But may an old friend give you a word of warning? What warning, Doctor? My boy, I would be very sad if your golden days in Heidelberg were spoiled by an unwise romance. I know. I'll remember that the Princess Margaret must be my bride. Oh, Kathy, in the months I've been here, I've said to myself, I can't fall in love with her. But every day I love you more. What about the Princess Margaret? I can't go back to the suffocating air of the court. Kathy, will you marry me? I love you. The magic of springtime is round us tonight. Enchantment is born on the breeze. I'm clothed in the silver of tender moonlight. The birds seem a soft in the tree. And clothed in the shadows. Dr. Engel, I can't talk to you now. A message, a message has just come from Carlsberg. Carl Franz, your grandfather is dying. Oh, no. You must go to his bedside at once. I have already packed your bag. I won't go back. It's your duty, Carl Franz. You must go to your grandfather. He needs you. Carl Franz. 
I'll come back to you, Captain. I promise. Come, your highness! No, you'll never come back. I'll never see him again. <laughs> We'll return for the second act of The Student Prince in just a moment. An essential part of the whole process of producing the arms and munitions which America must have is transportation. And to get some idea of how much transportation is needed, let's take a look at what is required to build just the engine of a jet-powered fighting airplane. One producer of engines for such planes draws the parts used in their construction from nearly 280 companies scattered in 23 different cities. To each one of these companies, there must be a steady flow of raw materials. And from each one of them, parts must be moved to the central factory before the engines can be assembled. Yes, there's a lot of transportation in building just one airplane engine. And airplane engines by the tens of thousands are just one feature of the nation's gigantic rearmament program. All in all, there is a tremendous transportation job ahead. The sort and size of transportation job that means railroads. As the country's defense and military production go forward, it will more and more be the job of the railroads to deliver the products of forests, farms, and mines from every corner of the country to shipyards, factories, and assembly plants in any other part of the country. And then to deliver the completed planes, guns, tanks, and munitions to wherever they are needed. Railroad transportation is made to order for this job. And during the days ahead, as the nation's rearmament program goes forward, the established efficiency and economy of transportation by rail will be of increasing importance. Given the opportunity to secure the materials and manpower which they need and must have, the railroads will keep pace with rising demand, providing the low-cost mass transportation so essential to the economic health and military strength of the nation. <laughs> And now here is Act Two of The Student Prince, starring Gordon McRae as Carl Franz, and his guest star Evelyn Case as Kathy. After only four months in Heidelberg, I had to leave my beloved Kathy to return to the court. My grandfather died only a few hours after I reached his bedside. And his last request was for me to set a date for my wedding to the princess I had never seen. Her Serene Highness, Princess Margaret Alexia Victoria Eugenie Elizabeth Maria. Your Majesty. Your Highness, we have long awaited the pleasure of meeting you, cousin. May I have the favor of a waltz? With pleasure, cousin. You dance beautifully, cousin. It is the duty of a queen to dance well with a king. The princess in my arms was beautiful and proper. She had been schooled since childhood to take her place someday beside me on the throne of Carlsberg. My heart ached to think that my beloved Kathy must be a stranger to my arms from this day forward. I excused myself and retired to my chambers for a night of restless sleep. And I dreamed myself back to Heidelberg again. Golden days in the sunshine of our happy youth. Golden days full of innocence. And full of truth. The memories of the gallant times with the student corps flooded back through my mind. 
The longing to lift a stein again with my friends along the banks of the River Necker. Drink, do I set a bright sun when they're shining on me? I imagined that I saw my Kathy smiling at me. Deep in my heart, dear, I have a dream of you. Passion of sunlight, perfume of roses and dew. Then I knew I had to go back to Heidelberg and keep my promise to Kathy. I beg your pardon. Is there a waitress here named Kathy? I'm Kathy. What can I do for you, ma'am? You were here when the King of Carlsberg was a student. Why do you ask? I'm the King's future wife. <gasps> the Princess Margaret. Does it surprise you that a princess should be jealous? It makes me glad, because you couldn't be jealous if you didn't love him. I love him very much. My whole life has been planned toward the day when I shall become his queen. Oh, madame, he has forgotten me. You'll never forget you, Kathy. Not as long as you're here waiting for him. He's coming back today. Today? Yes. And if you love him enough, you will go away. So he will think that you have forgotten him. I can't. I humbly beg you to give him up. So that perhaps he will turn to me. Your Highness, I... I will try to do what you ask of me. You are really the happy one. Because you have his love. Well, I can only say that I'm grateful to you. They're coming. The student calls. The king will be with him. I must not let him find me. Kathy! Kathy? Oh, Kathy, darling. Welcome back to Heidelberg, Your Majesty. Why, Kathy, what's the matter? Life changes, Karl Franz. You're a king, and your life belongs to your people. But your life, Kathy. I... I didn't wait for you, Karl Franz. I've promised to marry someone else. Oh, Kathy. Your Majesty? Yes, my friend. We have just learned of your coming marriage to the Princess Margaret. May your old friends of the student corps wish you every happiness. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. And this, is there some song you would like to sing with the students, Your Majesty? Perhaps for the last time? Yes, Dr. Engel. I would like to sing a serenade.
must tell you that I am near. Lean from above while I pour out my love, for you know to my life you are Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Evelyn Case will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is Gordon McRae with a word of thanks to our excellent supporting cast, John Frank, Betty Lou Gerson, and Lamont Johnson. The Student Prince with music by Sigmund Romberg and book and lyrics by Dorothy Donnelly was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroad. Listening to what Marvin Miller said a little while ago about the transportation service required to build the engine of a jet fighter made me think about just how essential, how vital these railroads of ours are, especially in times of emergency. Before we can even begin to build our defenses, we have to have railroads. And to meet rapidly rising demands, those railroads must be able to get the manpower and the steel and the other materials they need. For after all, Without the necessary railroad cars and locomotives, we could not build the tanks, the guns, the planes our fighting forces must have. And now here again is lovely Evelyn Case. <laughs> well, Evie, it was mighty tough to pass you up for just the throne and princess this evening. Oh, Gordon, I wouldn't have given up so easily, but I have to leave right away for some concerts. Maybe I'll have better luck next time. Well, we're certainly looking forward to the next time. Thank you, Gordon. Now, uh, what's your next show next week? Well, next Monday, Evie, another one of our favorite people, Miss Nadine Connor, will join us to do the swell Rogers and Hart musical, Dearest Enemy. Well, that's something no one will want to miss. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Evelyn, and thanks very much for being with us. All aboard! Friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Student Prince was presented by Special Arrangement with Century Library, Incorporated of New York. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in the Warner Brothers production, The West Point Story. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. Preceding was transcribed. Enjoy the finest in musical enjoyment.